Sup guys, welcome to another video tutorials that I'm going to be doing. This time is going to be about uh, replication and uh, basically setting up multiplayer stuff on Unreal Engine. I'm going to start from more basic stuff and going on from there to more advanced uh, like uh, replicating gameplay mechanics and such. Uh, Nemir with the Unreal Project browser open, I'm going to do this on the third person blueprint. Uh, I'm going to have star content just if we need. Just going to call this replication dot and I'm going to create the project and I'll be right back when it opens. Okay guys, so um, what I'm going to do for this video and to start explaining everything about replication, I'm going to start uh, talking about some a couple of basics. Um, uh, about our multiplayer replicate information and then I'm going to just quickly uh, set up uh, like a player name tag on top of that of the player uh, so we can identify each player like um, uh, we'll get its username so it will get the computer name instead of like uh, a steam name or whatever but if you add steam setup um, you would have um, you know we'll return the the steam username so to start first I'm going to get a couple of these starter uh, spend points that you get in the level. I'm just going to alt, alt and left click and drag to create a couple so we just don't spawn all, all in the same place. And I'm going to click on this character and I'm going to delete it. So uh, another thing you can right click on this arrow and you're going to have the number of players you can set up to have like two or three. I'm just going to say two. And I'm going to click on new other window and you can see now that we have um, two players and you can look and you can see that the movement of the characters is already uh, already comes uh, replicating correctly. So that's very good and as you can see here on the top we have our preview server and our client one and basically what Unreal Engine does when you have multiple windows uh, the Unreal Engine uh, simulates a network so it's like you are uh, connected in a network and um, yeah, it's like if you have separate computers, it's exactly the same thing because Unreal uh, recreates that when you have uh, these multiple windows. So I'm just going to close them for now. And I'm going to find our character blueprint and that should be inside our blueprints folder, third person character, double click that open. And you can see that um, we already have some uh, already made stuff on the event graph, such as the movement and like input and jumping all of this stuff over here you can leave because it's already replicated as default and if you over your character movement here on the component list you can see that um, it's already uh, network you can see on the third paragraph networking is fully implemented with server client correction and prediction included so whatever this um, this component offers it's already replicated which is great but so I'm going to start doing what I said I was going to do. I'm going to add a little text uh, over that of the player to display its name. The first thing that I'm going to do, I'm going to add a component and I'm going to call this, uh, I'm going to type text render and I'm just going to call this the player name. And I'm just going to put this above the head. I'm going to go over to the definition here and say the alignment to be on the center. There you go. And basically, uh, we're gonna uh, gonna set this text uh, in our event graph, for, and like we're gonna set it to each one of the um, the names basically. So I'm gonna say and just type here uh, name error, and I'm just gonna do this because I want to know if we fail to get um, if we fail to get the information of the name, uh, it's gonna be setting back to default. So I want this to be displayed if there's anything wrong. And with this done, I'm going to go into the event graph and I'm going to find some space and I'm just going to do a custom event. And now everything about replication in the events um, is done with custom events. So I'm just going to call this client uh, set player names. And now to start explaining the real stuff, now you can see here on the top right that there is uh, replicates uh, and if you click on this drop down it says not replicated multicast run on server and run on Unreal client. What this means is not replicated is basically it doesn't go into any network it's just local. Multicast is basically you can see replicate this event from the server to everyone else. This basically means that everyone in the game will run this function. 
which you may think, oh, so um, instead of running only on the client and only on the owning client and only on the server, uh, why don't I just use uh, the multicast all the time? The thing is, this multicast, um, it, it's going to run an instance on everyone, but it's going to, every, every person is going to be the owner of the information you multicast. So instead of you like run something on the server and the server spawns, let's say, a new player, and everyone, the clients are going to know, well, the player uh, spawned this new player, so I'm going to receive that information as a client, and I'm going to spawn uh, that same person. But that instance is going to be of the, the server's owner. Uh, the server is going to be the owner of that instance. With a multicast, uh, everyone is going to separately spawn a new actor that is going to be independent. So if then that actor, uh, let's say, dies, no one else is going to know it died, because... Um, it's not going to be uh, like the uh, no one is going to be the owner only the person that um, the run that uh, the spawn it's a little bit difficult to understand uh, but the multicast let's I'm just gonna say it's mostly used to stuff that happens really quick and then disappears for example special effects like um, the muzzle flash of a weapon something that doesn't really impact gameplay and doesn't need to be there um, so you just wanted to show that moment and then it doesn't matter if it disappears because um, everyone is just going to spawn it and then uh, delete it once the effect passes. So this is when you want to use this. Don't use this uh, in any more situations than those. The run on server is going to probably the most common thing that you're going to find yourself doing. Run on server is where you set variables to be replicated to everyone else. Is where you spawn actors so everyone can know they spawned. And basically that's what you do when you want information to get out there and everyone knowing about it. And the running on an client is when you want to do something only on the client that executes it. So the server is going to tell, well, uh, I only want you to do this. So you're going to mostly use this for widget stuff, because widgets only exist on the client. That's very important. Um, widgets uh, only exist on the client. Player controllers only exist on the clients. And you're going to find yourself having to use this node if you want to do something only for a specific person. Uh, that's what I'm going to do for this um, custom event running on owning client because when we create uh, and set our nameplates we want to do this on our own instance and no, we don't want anyone else to know about it because we want to create the players we only will want to get the information replicated we don't want to everyone else be doing the same thing so if I set this for example for a multicast everyone will set um, every name to to the name that they have stored, basically, everyone will be called the same. Using a non client will allow you to um, not, le not letting anyone know that you are replicating the name, and you can safely um, just get the replicated information without anyone knowing. Uh, I don't know if that makes sense, but it's going to be easier once I do it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get the player name, uh, I'm going to need to get this value, and the thing that I'm going to do is when you do this, uh, you always never want to have like lose variables, uh, like getting getting values from like floating here. What you want to do is always pass this information to inputs. So I'm just going to call this the player name, create a new input, and it's going to be the type text render component. The reason that you do this, it's because if you are getting uh, or setting something that it's not yours, uh, you're going to get, when you drag from some place or like over here, if I drag this and get, you're going to be getting your instance of this data. You are not getting from where you ran this uh, event graph, uh, this event, sorry. So what I'm going to do is that uh, now I'm going to call this on event begin play. So I'm just going to type event begin play and you can see that we can call this now, okay? And now you're going to have this little input uh, where we're going to pass this information. So just drag in the graph and connect this. Now logically you might think, well, you're doing the same thing as dragging from over here. But the thing is, um, this event begin play is called, uh, basically it's like it's the server executing it. So you want to, so the server is going to tell yourself, the client, that you want to uh, run this um, code. But if you want to let the server decide 
which um, component you are getting. Uh, you don't want to decide that by, by yourself. So um, if you didn't do this, basically there were going to be an error for, um, for example, the server. Because remember, you are doing this on owning client. If it's the owning client itself getting this information, like from here, and you use this, the server wouldn't know about it. So the server, the server will get the error uh, that is over here. So it will not set the name. But doing this will allow the server to be the one to deliver the inputs and basically that will mean uh, that the server and the clients will get this information successfully so doing this I am then going to do a for each loop and actually I'm not going to need this uh, I, I did this for an example uh, that you do uh, I'm actually not going to need this I think so if you do this and before this for each loop I'm going to get a node called get all actors of class. Well, this will allow you to get um, all the actors that exist in the level. So I'm just going to say, well, I want to get the third person characters. And I'm going to drag this into the array. And now this is going to mean it's going to loop through everyone uh, that is in the level, every character, and it's going to set the player name. Actually, I want to get it. So get the player name, uh, that should be back here, and now I'm going to set the text, and now I'm going to, well, we want to set this to the player name, so I'm going to get from the, the character, there is something called the player state. Now everything inside the player state, and you can see this little sign up here, these little two balls mean that uh, this variable or this uh, uh, this node is replicated. If there is these two walls, it means that is replicated. If you replicate the variable and you drag it in, it's going to have the, the same sign. So this means that every information that's inside there uh, is known by everyone in the server. That's why we are able to get this information for every character, even though uh, it's in another like computer. You can still get that information over the network because it's replicated. And from here, I'm just going to get the player name. And this information here is all default inside the player state. And as I said, this player name is going to result in the, um, the name of whatever platform you're in. If you're on Steam, it's going to get your Steam username. But because I don't have that, it's going to return my computer name. So if I drag this from the value, it's going to convert. And I believe that's it. It's probably going to display a really big name, but let's try and see. So I have a 258, well, that's interesting, I made a mistake somewhere, so the set text is returning none. Mm. There's something weird going on. I'm just going to pause and figure out what's wrong. Okay, guys, I just figured out what's wrong. Uh, first of all, I'm going to have to tell you the player name that you get from the player state, if you don't have anything set up. Uh, before, I think it was a computer name, but right now it seems to have a little problem, like it displays just some number. And uh, it's a little bit funky. So better than that, uh, drag from the player state, tell the player, get the ping, just drag that in into the string uh, to convert it into a text. So basically, uh, that is going to return your ping, so obviously the host is going to have zero, the clients will have some number, uh, because the Unreal Engine inside, like, it's in the same computer, but it kind of simulates some ping, so you, you always have some ping. The other thing is something very important, here in the event begin play, remember, when you play, you can see that the other characters sometimes take a couple of time to spawn, and if you do that in the same uh, like the same tick as the event begin play you're gonna try to get this and it will give you errors because the third person character hasn't successfully spawned yet so to fix that and you can just drag in add a delay and just put in two seconds and you then you call the function and now to see all of that working you can play 
And now you can see that you have an error, but when the thing updates, you can see that I have zero ping as the server, because remember I'm in the server window, the client has 11 ping. Now you can see, you're in the client 1, I have 11 ping, and he has zero ping as the host. We can try this with another player, it, pro it should work the same way. So let's give it a little bit of an update. There you go, I have zero, this client has 19, and this client has 19 as well. I think because this is simulated inside Unreal, it doesn't really change. Or it does, because I have 17. Oh yeah, this is probably going to change um, from client to client, because um, like it's, uh, it's an independent number that is always changing. So at an instance that you do something, uh, it's going to be this value, but at another instance, the ping might change, because it's in milliseconds. So basically, uh, but remember, if you are doing a name, that name is going to be set from the beginning, so the values will be the same, uh, like in the same place. Uh, let me see if I can just find something here, here that we can see that is the same, like it's different, but it's constant. I'm just going to pause and get back in a minute. Okay guys, I just found something very cool that I didn't even thought they added, uh, but they must have added in some recent um, updates. If you get um, unique, well not unique, sorry, if you get net ID, uh, how is it called? Player ID, sorry. So just drag in, get the player ID, and if you see the description of the player ID, uh, you can see that a unique net ID value uh, number. So um, it's set on the current online sub system, so if it's going to be Steam, it's going to be your Steam number or something like that. But this is something different uh, because it's unique and it's constant. So now we should see the difference. So just connect that up, don't forget. Now if you play, as the server, I'm going to be here. I have 292, 294, 293. And if now I go to one of these guys, Uh, you can see here 294, and I have 294, 293, 292, and it's the same thing for everyone else. You can see it's replicating correctly. Uh, let me try and go over here. As you can see, 293. It's replicated correctly, and now the only thing that you should do, like for getting the name, uh, because it's just really quick. If you have like a save game or uh, if you set the, your player name in some place, the only thing that you gotta do is go from this array element and for example get your player name variable uh, that you set in your player uh, or like if you set it in the player state you can get it from here. Uh, this is where you drag in. Don't type in and get player state, remember what I talked about. If you do this uh, it will give you errors because the servant won't know what is this and it will give you an error you always have to drag in from stuff that you find or that you pass through inputs so uh, in this case what you want to do is go into the array element get it and do it this way so this is a very simple way um, how to get the, co the code behind to get a player name and with this you can do like player net IDs and other stuff like score or its health basically it's the same way uh, so yeah, I'm gonna leave it for this video. I hope um, you guys understood what I was saying. It's a little bit difficult to explain this with words, but I hope with all of this you kind of understood uh, what uh, the basics of replication. In the next video I'm gonna start working on uh, replicating variables and like passing L values around and stuff. So yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed and I'll see you all in the next one. Bye bye.